la ciudad de Miami. Esto es en Bayside ahora. This is Miami just a few days ago. A lot of people said it was one thing, but we're going to really get into this. Look at this. Look at the line of patrol cars. I've been getting message after message about this. You see it on social media. Look at that. Look at all the cop cars. What is going on? This is that narrative where they're talking about young people were having uh, collisions with sticks no, and fighting in the streets. Now it could be, but there's something else going on here. And this is, we're going to show you a lot of information about this today because there's been so much coming out about it. And I think it's going to be very helpful to you. Look at that. This is Miami. They say there's 70 to 100 police. See the officers running? The officers running. People running. Spotlights. Wow. Okay, let me look right at you. I'll we'll talk to you. Now, there is a nefarious thing that's going on with this. Now, it, it, there's only so many things that this could be. I did a broadcast on this for our full disclosure program just this past weekend. And a lot of people began to message and say, Joseph, why are you talking about these things? Why are you looking at it? Well, number one, the issues we're facing in the culture today are filled with turmoil. They're filled with uh, issues that are um, both cloak and dagger. And a lot of it is, is fake and some of it's real. In this case here, the speculation is number one, that the, the authorities are saying this was indeed youth that were having a fight with sticks and, and weaponry. Secondly, there is a great conversation going on that people saw, get this, I'm going to show it to you, giants, giants walking through the streets. The other speculation is, is that it was alien activity that they're seeing walking through the streets. I'm going to show you some pretty compelling video, or at least it brings more question marks as we get into this. The reason I'm bringing this out is because there is going to be great last days deception. There is going to be things that try to take our attention away from the Lord Jesus and ultimately, we can still look in the Word of God and have an answer for anything and everything they bring out. We've been prophesying for some time. There would come a point of ultimate disclosure with the alien narrative, and we're just looking at a lot of information today. So I think this is going to really help you. Now, just before I really get into this, and I'm going to show you a number of clips, things we've accumulated, uh, eyewitness testimonies. Uh, I want you to please consider sharing this if you would. Somebody needs to see this because information that brings peace is what I want to offer you. I want to go down an avenue, not only of, of uh, clips that are wild and, and interesting, but also I want to go to the Word of God. I want to begin to build your life on the Word of God. And remember, at the end of the day, the answer is the same. Jesus is Lord. We begin to see victory and light will shine in darkness. Now, I'm going to go into this. Please repost it. But also, I want to say a huge thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. You're helping us on a tremendous level. And I want to say one thing about it, and I bring it up every single time, and that's this. There's a lot of scams out there. There's people that try to pretend to be us. But I simply want to say to you, you've been really intelligent avoiding that. The only way you give or become a partner in this ministry is by going to josephz.com or you text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. And the reason I bring it up is there's always new people watching and there's always these scammers out there. And you guys have done a great job avoiding that. But if you've been a partner a long time here or you're brand new, thank you so much for reaching people like never before. And then also, if you want to become one today, please comment right in the feed, partnering today. Now, I'm going to get into this <laughs> and I've had people actually ask me, Joseph, why talk about these things? Why go down the avenue? Well, it's kind of the same reason I would show my children uh, films and movies, you know, of course, decent ones and all that when they were younger, so that when they saw things when they were older, they could look at it and say, big deal, because I had shown them the world system through the lens of the gospel. And when we're seeing things that are going on in the world, this nefarious type of things, wild stuff that's going on in the culture, it's a serious deal. Now, after we go through all of this, I'm going to begin to dialogue about what the Bible says, what I consider it to be the UFO alien narrative, or is this really giants? I want to look at everything first, and then we're going to get into that. So just before we go into it, 
or as we go into it, let's take a good look at this. You saw the opening where all the police were being scrambled and looking at it. Let's take a look at one of the videos that show what some people are speculating are these nine to 10 foot entities or giants, maybe aliens they're saying, that were running around the streets. Now I have a lot of answers for this today, either way that it lands, but I wanna show you this next video. Let's show you this video of the blurry figure running around by the staircase. You see that there? See that? Somebody took this from their apartment. Let's show it again. You can see that blurry figure like drifting along. They measure that at nine to 10 feet, nine to 10 feet. One more time. You see that? This is one of the reasons people are saying there's giants, there's aliens, and the police were there. And then there's been testimonies that there was, you know, people opening fire on these things. They could hear it uh, happening. And it was citizens doing it out of fear. And there was people running for their lives. There's other videos, which I won't show you, people running and actually getting collided with uh, vehicles because they were so afraid running in the streets. It's interesting to say the least. Let's look further. Let's look at this. Now, this is a more close-up view of people running in terror uh, with what was happening there. Now, again, there's hope in this, and I'm going to begin to talk about what I think is going on. We opened the door for this during full disclosure, and I've had a lot of feedback on it. But let's look at this video clip of chaos as it broke out and uh, why this might be. Seven to ten foot aliens or creatures spotted in Miami Mall. There is no media coverage. Cops are covering it up saying kids were fighting with fireworks. Yet all these hundreds of cop cars near the mall and air traffic stopped that night, except for black military choppers. Air traffic stopped. Is government trying to hide something? You can see a figure walking in the video. There we go again. So many people have claimed they have seen some tall creature shadows with no head, and when they approach is near, the lights going off. And the power went off for nearly 61,000 homes at that time in Miami. Witness claims that it's a tall shadow figures and some claim that it's a Project Blue Beam. Whatever it is, there isn't it again. scary? What do you think? Another angle on it there. That thing walking with another angle. Let's go ahead and show the clip of people that were running. This is what was happening during that moment. Now, the question has been asked, why is there not more cell phone clips of this or any of it? And people have come out and said, well, it was so terrifying that they began to run from these things. And that's what you have happened. Now, one individual, we talked about this on full disclosure. He came out, this young man came out and he did a video where he was saying, you know, I saw it and these, these, these creatures or these entities look like shadow humanoid things. They were like nine to 10 feet tall and they were coming in and out of sight. In other words, they look like shadows that would disappear and reappear as they were walking. That was this man's testimony with it. Then he came out and began to change his story. Now, I want to show you both sides of this. So in full disclosure, we showed you his full story and what he said he saw. Now he's recanting that right on the heels of it. Now, some people are speculating maybe somebody got to him and made him change his story. The, the bottom line is, I don't know. But I'm going to show you the second part to that when he came back and said, you guys, I've never been to Miami. And he's changing his story. Let's watch this, this eyewitness, supposedly. Eyewitness from the Miami, Florida giant situation. Uh, says he'd never been in Florida a day in his life. Now, he could be lying or he could be for real, but he said, like, we, we buggy, you know what I'm saying? We need to chill out. I don't even know why he would play like that, though. Like, come on now, like, man, you know, people, like, it's 2024 now. Like, come on now. But, yeah, check this clip out and let me know what y'all think. Yo, listen. Yo, y'all got to chill. Yo, crazy. i never been to Miami in my life, I was dead trolling, yo. Y'all cannot, yo, y'all can't be that, like, y'all can't be that gullible, yo. I was just trolling. I've never been to Miami. I'm not in danger. I'm chilling. Like, real, I mean, I want to make me go viral. I don't, but yo, listen, for real, I was trolling. trolling. I'm chilling. Chilling. What's wrong with y'all? In other words, I'm faking. Crazy, yo. That, that y'all bugging. So you see this guy and he came out and was very strong, had a very convincing, compelling argument, descriptive detail about what was being seen there. And then he comes back 
and says, I've never been there, never even been to Miami. Uh, I wasn't a part of that. I was just messing with you all. That's what I was doing. So, you know, you'll have to decide. And, and the truth of the matter is maybe he was, maybe this whole thing is a big hoax. Maybe it's a big false flag narrative, but I have a little bit more I want to show you. And then we're going to really get into this. Um, the witness changed his story. Now, let me show you another clip about a gentleman that called his father who happened to be on the police force during that time. And he asks him what was going on in Miami when he was on duty. Now, notice how this goes. Let's watch this clip. My dad's a police officer in Miami. And I mean, like, he's even running for sheriff. And I, I just talked to him. He didn't say anything about that. Hey. Hey, do you, uh, have you been seeing the alien stuff? Did you see that in the, at the Bayside? Not a lot to talk about it. Nothing. You're no help, dude. Now, here's the fascinating part about this, looking right at you. The fascinating part about all this is that the scripture has a lot to say about it. There's so much we could get into. This guy here is talking to his dad who's on the police force, and he won't comment won't comment. Now, again, you got to take all this stuff with a grain of salt, but something's going on. Something happened here. Let me show you even one more clip. Now, this clip here, I might show it more than once just because you got to really pay attention to the video that this lady's pointing out. It's from another angle. It's something that not a lot of people have seen yet, but I want you to watch this clip where it really shows from the street level what they could have been looking at. Watch this. The Miami creatures sighting from the other day that it sparked all that chaos down there and I think I found something so just bear with me here okay so this is what I did with the footage I put it in black and white and then really slowed it down as well as turned down some of the brightness watch right here you can see something mid screen really you see that tall and kind of translucent now here I'm gonna back it up so you can slowly see it you see how tall that is? See the height? And it's walking in front. Right there. You see it. And then it kind of disappears into the darkness. Now, here's the video where I edit it with color. You'll see it. Right there. See right it? There. Mid screen, mid, mid photo. Now it's gonna walk see that subtle figure walking through the lights? That building. That's about see 10 how feet it's kind tall. of translucent and really tall? Maybe more. And then it disappears. Here we go, one more time. You can kind of see its form. Kind of matches what that other testimony was earlier. We said it watch. was coming in and out of focus, translucent, shadow type in images. It literally walks and is like pretty transparent in a way. When you're looking at these things that are that are out there, the bottom line is, and I want to say this to you clearly, we know that it says, and I'm going to go to the scripture and I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to show you something that, that has happened back in 2002 uh, that there's not a video footage of, but there's a eyewitness account and a recreation of it that I'm going to get into in just a moment because it leads to the same narrative. Now, there's only a few things this can be. One, this is either exactly what the officers and everybody's saying it is, and it was some kind of street scuffle and there was issues going on, and that could be the case. Uh, the other thing that could be happening is there really is a cover-up taking place and there is some kind of entity that they can't explain, but somehow that the the powers that be were called in with black helicopters and all the things and and all of it and spotlights and high-powered you know weaponry and all this. Now, maybe that is what happened. 
or this is another project bluebeam thing where they're projecting things with 3D imagery. After all, we are in the age of AI. This could absolutely be a hoax and they're doing it in the public eye. This is nothing that we have not talked about for the last several years. I personally believe whichever it is, it is all in the scope of biblical last days issues. So when we're looking at this, the question becomes not, what is it? What are we going to do? The question is, do you believe in Jesus? Is Jesus Lord? Because no matter what it is, you're overcoming it by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Big deal. Uh, whether it's uh, nefarious entities that are being allowed permission to do things in the natural, if it's demonic manifestations, if indeed it is the Nephilim returning which that has been a debate for some time. And I'll give you the scripture. Then I'm going to go into another segment to this that you really don't want to miss. I have something so potent to talk to you about that I've never talked about on here before, but it is something that's come out and kind of disappeared. Some of you may know about it, some of you may not, but I'm going to go into it nonetheless. But let me just give this to you. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37. Matthew 24 and verse 37. I want to show it to you right on the screen here because I want you to see it with me. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37 has a very potent scripture. It says this, but as the days of Noah were, as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Let's go to the next verse just to kind of break it down. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, until that day that Noah entered the ark. This is really intense. But let's go back to verse 37 where it says, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. The days of Noah depicts a very serious time. And let me really explain this for a minute, because the days of Noah, Noah was not rescued because he was better than other people. He was more righteous than other people. Noah was rescued because his bloodline was pure. When it says he was perfect in all his lineage or his days, uh, his bloodline is, was pure because the bloodline had been polluted by this nefarious activity of fallen angels in Genesis chapter 6, where they intermingled with women and they created giants, Nephilim. That's what David fought. And when David fought Goliath, he was fighting a Nephilim, a Nephilim. And he came from this mixed bloodline thing. God got so upset with this that he had to cleanse the earth. And that's one of the reasons God sent the flood to purify the bloodline. So Jesus could be born through a pure bloodline. So it wasn't absolutely messed up from this nefarious activity. Let me give you one more scripture to back that up. It says in Luke 17, verse 26, Luke 17, 26, it's a parallel passage. Luke chapter 17, verse 26, it really says also um, the same scripture as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man, as it was in the days of Noah. One of the implications to this, and if you really study this out and you get into it, you realize these Nephilim, they were wiped up by the flood, but they showed up after the flood. And there is a lot of argument to be made that says they were never completely wiped out. And because of this, they are still possibly here today or they can manifest today. I think that's a lot of where we get the alien narrative. I think that's a lot of where we get grays and, you know, what do they call them? Reptilians and all the mess that people talk about, or maybe even some of the things people are seeing in the wilderness with like hairy creatures and, and uh, all the stuff they've seen over the years is from this type of narrative. Now I'm saying all this only to say at the end of the day, there's no such thing as aliens, but there is such a thing as deception. There's no such thing as these foul uh, creatures that were purely created by God, but there is such a thing as polluted bloodlines. And when you got this nefarious activity happening and more and more people giving way to the powers of darkness through scientific issues, through the, the wickedness that's gone on in the culture, through things like CERN, which I'll talk about more and more again in the coming days, there are they're potentially opening up ways and portals for these wicked entities to manifest like never before. As the days of Noah is a depiction of the same type of scenario Noah faced, even though there was normal society going on, giving and receiving of marriage, eating and drinking and celebrating, nobody knew the terror and the difficulty that was about to befall them until the floods broke loose from the deep, from the heavens, and Noah and his family was saved, rescued on that ark. That is the same depiction that we see today. There is a nefarious activity happening. People treat it as normal because there's a normalcy bias.
And when this begins to get closer and closer, we will again see very likely the return of the Nephilim. And the Nephilim are giants. They are manifested creatures that are able to step into the natural because of all this stuff. Now, everything bows the knee to Jesus. It doesn't matter. If one of these things showed up and they were like, fee, fi, fo, fum, and you took authority over it in the name of Jesus, they'd probably keel over and start barfing their guts out or something because the Spirit of the Lord will not allow that demon spirit to take dominion over the church. That's why the ecclesia is here. And whether or not this is fake, falsified, real, false flags trying to hide this new list coming out, or that itself could be a, a false flag narrative, either way, whatever it is to hide all the nefarious deeds of the Manchurian candidate and his wicked cronies that are doing things, whatever all of this is, the answer is still the same. But that being said, let me look right at you. Let me look right at you. I just want to look at you. If you're still hanging in here with me, um, I think it's important that we discuss this stuff. People are like, Joseph, why even bring it up? Why talk about it? Because people will come to wrong conclusions about the last day's deceptions if we don't bring it to the Word of God. We don't simplify it. We don't simply disesteem the wickedness that's trying to be uh, uh, put upon the culture. If we don't begin to disesteem it or at least identify it for the purpose of knowledge and then what to do about it, that's what the sons of Issachar did. They knew the times and seasons and then what to do about it. If we don't offer information, people will be let off by every wind of doctrine. They'll float away with anything people say about it and come to their own conclusion without a biblical foundation. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing that kind of makes an argument for giants. Giants or the Nephilim. Giants like Goliath, giants like the King of Og in the Bible, giants like the Rephaim, different ones in Scripture that stood up. Yes, there were giants, and yes, they had an origin. And it said so in Genesis 6. Some people argue that Genesis chapter 11, uh, people even argue that Nimrod, the man that was uh, leading in the valley of Shinar and created that tower that went to the heavens, was himself a Nephilim. It's an argument. It's not something we can land on straight from the Scripture, but it is an argument. But when you're looking at this, the question becomes, is this stuff possible in a modern age? Well, let me give you a testimonial of something that happened in 2002 over in the Middle East where a, a group of soldiers ran into something in a cave. Now, there's been interviews about this. A lot of this has been swept under the rug, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into this, and they encountered what many believe was a red-haired Nephilim or giant, and they're noted for having six fingers on each hand. And it's a serious deal. And here's their story. And many people have come on record talking about this. Of course, the government rejects this. The military rejects it. But this is the, the account of the giant of Kandahar. Let's watch this. Giant, Mr. K said, took place during the height of Operation Enduring Freedom in 2002, when the military was engaged in fierce battles with the Taliban in their de facto capital in the Kandahar province during the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. It all began when in 2002 a group of soldiers went missing while on patrol in the remote region of Kandahar in the south of Afghanistan. When they failed to make radio contact for some time, the army sent in a special operations unit to investigate. Then while searching for the missing unit high up in the mountains, the special forces unit came across a cave with scattered army equipment around but no go. sign of the missing soldiers. And that's when they chanced upon the Kandahar giant. <laughs> Though the tale grows with each telling, some reports suggesting that the humanoid grew as tall as 15 feet, this red-headed giant with six digits, leather moccasins, and smelling like dead bodies suddenly emerged from a cave and attacked the soldiers, impaling one with a spear. And that's when the soldiers opened fire. Between them, the squad was armed with M4 carbines, M249 light machine gun and an M107 Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle. This much firepower concentrated on one target for one second, let alone 30, would be extremely destructive. They talked about how they shot him in the face. After the troops killed the giant, they called in for an extraction. A Chinook helicopter came and they loaded the giant into the Chinook, which carried it to a transport plane. And then no one ever saw it again. Okay, let me look right at you. 
this is important. So that's just a very quick summary of the account. Um, a recent acquaintance and, and somebody that's going to become probably more a guest on this broadcast very soon, and we've been dialoguing about it. His name is L.A. Marzuli. He interviewed one of the soldiers that was there. And uh, of course, they changed his voice, altered it. Some of those videos got pulled down by certain people. And of course, there uh, you could find remnants of it. But he was um, really up on that information and began to talk about it. So when you recognize that there is some accounts of this and there's enough uh, information about it out there that there just could be possibly uh, more than nothing. So what we're seeing is not nothing. That being said, I, we got to start asking the question, okay, so what is it people are seeing? What's going on in Miami? What's really happening? And some people might be saying, Joseph, this is freaky. Like, why are we discussing this stuff? Why are we going down the road? Because I've made a commitment on this broadcast that as things unfold and as events happen, we will continue to grapple with them. We will point at them. We will look at them, but never at the expense of the word of God, ever. We always have to come back to the written word of God. But if we don't know what the word of God says about certain things, then when young people or new people that don't know any better see this stuff, they can get swept away in a symphony of distraction and deception. And so what we've got to do is begin to give them the information that will cause them to live, move, have their being, and overcome anything that this world throws at them. And listen, we're getting into more and more of the last of the last days. The last of the last days, and the world is going to get nuts. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. But the good news is, is you're here. I'm here. The, the body of Christ is here. The red church is here. We're going red in the blood of the lamb. And that means on a bad day, we're anointed for, to be the best there is. We're anointed for it. Now, let me talk about this really quickly. I'm going to go to the board and I want to write out one more time what a lot of this stuff really could be very quickly. And I want you to see it visually. Okay. I'm going to go over here. I think this will really help you today. Here we go. Now, when you're looking at any of this kind of kind of information and we're walking through it, you got to really understand something. The enemy doesn't want you to know what the real truth is because he's afraid that you'll know what to do about it. And that is why I like to talk about this stuff. You know, people, if you've heard me say, don't focus on conspiracies. Well, first of all, we're not. We are focusing at the truth behind a conspiracy. We're focusing on the truth of what things really are and going to be begin to drag darkness into light. So when you shine the light on a thing, it becomes very simplified. But let me just write down what this really is. Number one, this involves the, the alien narrative, the UFO narrative, anything that's speculation or in the sky. Let me write this down very quickly. So when we look at Or it could be the giant narrative. Okay, and we wrote this uh, word Nephilim. If you watched us on New Year's Eve, I wrote this word on the board and it was really out of context when I wrote it. I wrote it on the board because it's out of context. And I thought, why am I writing this? It jumped up in my spirit. I'm writing about the coming year, all this. And, and I heard the spirit say the word Nephilim. You're going to hear this word more and more. And that is really what the word giants means. Or in this context, it's giants, these perversions of God's creation. But let me show you now. All of this could be one of a few things. Let me, let me write it down for you. It could be just one of a few things. It could be one. It could be tech. Okay. It could be tech. Um, and just on the heels of that, it could be man-made false flags. Okay. And what do I mean by man-made? Um, meaning they're inducing things to try to get a narrative going so they can say, look over here, I'm doing something else over there, but it could be man-made false flags, this kind of stuff. It absolutely could be, it could be that. Um, when I say tech, when we're talking UFOs or, or UAPs, they call them, this could be uh, government or other entities that have special abilities to do things that are beyond understanding, that, that they, can, they can violate the laws of physics in some ways uh, through government stuff. But the technology that's out there is really advanced. And I'll just put advanced. Okay, number two, and this is the one, this is the one that I really think uh, could be something that's growing and growing. It could be things like uh, Project Bluebeam. And you say, what is Project Bluebeam? Well, Project Bluebeam is a hologram. It's like 3D uh, holographic 
tech, right? It's 3D hologram technology. And you say, well, why would they do that? Well, with Project Bluebeam and what they talk about with that is they can, they can do things that project images into the sky that make the images look as if they're real. It makes it just look real. Uh, I think of the recent Spider-Man movie where he was in London and all those drones went up and they were broadcasting an image of a great big monster and all this stuff was happening. Now, this is something the Spirit of the Lord showed me some time ago. And if you've been following us for some time, it's that word. I'm going to write this here because it was the word I began to see. Um, augmented. Reality. And again, listen, none of this stuff should bring fear. It's just good to expose it. It's just good to expose it. So augmented reality, what do I mean by that? Well, an augmented reality, um, we'll put the camera back on the board so you can see this here. An augmented reality, when we're talking about augmentation of reality, it means uh, it just mutates it. it. It shows you a greater reality than what you're actually looking at. This is where you see VR glasses, people looking at this. I had a vision uh, back in 2018, something like that. I was in the, the, the woods in a large valley in the mountains. And as I'm there, I was with my son and I looked up and I had like an intuitive vision of a giant creature marking, marching through the woods. And I knew it wasn't real. It was with my mind's eye and intuitive vision. And the Holy Spirit said, this is something that's going to happen. It's going to look photo real. It's going to be real for people. And it's going to become an augmented reality. And I thought it meant VR glasses, but I do believe they already have the technology and they will begin to blast imagery like Project Bluebeam, which will involve uh, the, the UFO deception. Okay, now remember, there's three points to this, all right? I'm going to get to the third one in a moment. But it's talking about the UFO deception. Why deception? Because they need something in the sky that, that everybody looks at and they come into world unification over. I actually believe this will be involved with the artificial intelligence narrative. I think that's what the Antichrist is going to use when his time comes after the ecclesia, the church is no longer here, but the UFO deception, artificial intelligence, all of this is involved with this for the purpose of saying, look, there's something out here. There's something really serious going on and it's real, ladies and gentlemen. The other thing Project Bluebeam can do, not only set holograms out, but it can put, this is wild, it can put voices into people's heads. Okay. This is one of the things that they've talked about. They can actually project voices into people's heads. So let me look right at you again. Here, here's one thing why this is serious. If they can project voices into people's heads and they can do this kind of stuff and they're talking about, you know, being able to communicate a voice to someone's head, there could be a religious deception with this also. Imagine if they had um, a false messiah appear in the sky and then simultaneously blasted words into people's minds and said, look up there, there he is, he's returned, and now he's the one world leader and all these things are happening and they begin to deceive the masses. I believe this is how the Bible says in Matthew 24, if it's possible, even the elect could be deceived. By putting an image in the sky, now you're trusting your five senses, and then they put a, a, a voice in your head, and you're looking at that stuff. This is one of the things that technology is getting to this point, and let's not even get into what Elon is creating, okay? Now, when we're looking at this, so that's one. One, let's look at the board again. One, it could be government tech or other things that are advanced. You're seeing this stuff out there, too, and these two could begin to play together. It could be a Project Bluebeam where they blast holograms, and they can add things to it, create a reality, UFOs, um, religious icons, any of it, whether it be the Messiah or something else. And that's why we got to know the Word of God to have discernment about these things. Uh, Hebrews 5.14, if you begin to read the Word of God, you're studying the Word of God, you're in the Bible, you'll be able, be able to begin to discern uh, truth from fiction. You'll be able to discern good and evil. And that's why we know the Word of God more than our five senses. you got to trust the Word of God. Jesus said, blessed are they who believe without seeing. Okay, now this is another point. Here's the third one. The third one, and this is controversial for people, but the third issue is a lot of this stuff could be real. You say, real? You just got done telling us all this other stuff is going on. Well, when you got issues like CERN, and they're opening up gateways through that. I've done a lot on CERN. I'll do it again soon. Uh, they open up gateways when you've got all these people messing with uh, everything from 
the Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum. You've got stuff where CERN is basically, you know, they're opening up scientific portals uh, to open up this stuff where you could begin to see these wicked entities come through. Or it could just be straight up nefarious fallen angel and demonic activity meaning they're manifesting. If ever you look at the word UFOs and you replace the word UFO with demons or fallen angels, it'll get, it'll get on the scene there and people begin to recognize that that's probably what's going on. It's interesting if you pr replace words with other words, how it, how it uh, does that. Because whenever people have had these encounters with these UFOs, these entities, it's never peaceful. It's always terrifying, scary, and they're always trying to do things that are evil. Now, if you've watched me for some time, I've broken this down before, but the real could be that we're getting closer and closer. Let me look at you. We're getting closer and closer to the last days. We're getting closer and closer to the return of Jesus. And so because of that, all the stops are being pulled out and these wicked, nefarious creatures are trying to manifest. So let me come over. I'll look at you again. Let me look right at you. As wild as this is, and you look at all the stuff that's happening, you know, the Bible does not leave us unarmed. It doesn't leave us not knowing what's going on. At the end of the day, none of this stuff should scare you or frighten you. Um, what happened in Miami? The answer is, I don't know. I wasn't present. I wasn't in that location when that happened. So I didn't see it with my eyes. It's like a lot of things. You can't really say, I saw it, I know. You can take people's word for it. You can look at it. Here's the whole point in bringing this out. There will come a day I'm going to go over to the board again. One more time. I need to write one more thing. There will come a day. Listen to me. Let me write this here. I'll just do it over here. Of ultimate disclosure. What do I mean by ultimate disclosure? What does that mean, ultimate disclosure? It means all of it. All of it. Everything. All of it. All three things and more will be, become reality to people. In other words, what's going to happen is I think places like, uh, you know, the Vatican has already discussed this. Uh, they have a telescope in Arizona called uh, Lucifer, and they're looking up and talking about these things, and they've already prepared for what it would be like if visitors from off planet came here, and they'd either come, these are the words of the Vatican and some of their vicars and all that, they say that either these entities would come to evangelize us, or we'd evangelize them and maybe baptize them, or they'd baptize us, because they're preparing for this, because somehow they believe this is going to happen, and there's, there's a big part of that. Um, ultimate disclosure. Let me come over here. Just like with artificial intelligence, there will come a point of what they call the singularity, where man and machine merge and you don't, the, the machine catches up with man and becomes its own thinking uh, mechanism. There will come a point, and I believe this very much, because uh, you've already seen it on Capitol Hill, you've seen it everywhere. These type of videos in Miami are only gonna get more and more. This is something we've been prophesying as the Lord shared it with us for the last three years, since 2020, very heavily. Uh, going, actually, almost four years now, I suppose, <laughs> uh, coming into this year. But the point I'm bringing out is, is that they will do this to the point of ultimate disclosure. And I believe there will be a day that they interview one of these things, that they put them on camera, they begin to communicate, they begin to have absolutely irrefutable evidence. But with the age of AI and deep fakes, they could do that by deception all day long. And all they need to do is have officials say, oh yeah, it's true. The point in bringing all of this out, the whole point, is to recognize Jesus is Lord and no matter what they throw at us, who cares? Jesus is Lord. So I'm bringing these kind of things out so we can keep pointing at the truth of the gospel, keep pointing at, at understanding. And so this stuff doesn't move me at all, not even a little bit. If they had one that was irrefutable and he's like, fee, fi, fo, fum, walking through the streets and saying, you know, uh, uh, we actually created you. We're the, 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 the originators of your species. We, we put you here. And they went down that road. I think that is where the deception's going.
All of this is to marshal in an antichrist agenda. All of this is to marshal in them saying there is no God. We did this. We are God, whether it's aliens, giants, whatever. Pick your um, pick your narrative of stupidity, right? <laughs> so here's what I want to say to you. If all of it's real or none of it's real, here's what you need to do right now. You need to begin to get to know Jesus because I have a word for this season that as you're growing and knowing the Lord more and more and more through this time, the greater one's living in you and light will shine in darkness and he's anointed you. Listen to me, on a bad day, you are anointed to be the very best there is. You're anointed for this time. You're not anointed to shrink back. You're not anointed to go, oh no, what are we going to do? There's crazy entities and wild things happening. No, you're anointed for this. You're anointed to push back against the darkness. You're anointed to tell the, the kingdom of darkness to sit down and shut up. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, the devil and his hordes may come walking over, but they'll go limping back. That's you. Because the greater one lives within you. Now, I want to say this also. If you don't know Jesus, I got to tell you, the days are going to get so wild, you better get to know Jesus. And when I say get to know Jesus, I mean give him your life. Turn from your way of doing things. Give your life to him. And I am not offering you the plague, okay? Getting to know Jesus, giving your life to him is not offering you the plague. It's not a life of misery. It's a life, in Jesus' own words, of life and life more abundantly. All this wicked stuff that you see going on in the world, it's only going to increase. You might as well get in the answer where peace abounds in your heart. You can look at this stuff with peace and say, ha, who cares? what the devil does. Who cares what the darkness does? And the only reason we're bringing it out is to help people navigate because they don't know. They don't know. And I'm going to continue to do it. But at the end of the day, here's what you do. You say, Jesus, save me. I want to say something to you right now. If you don't know if you left the planet and your life were to end right now, where you would end up, you need to cry out and say, Jesus, save me comment right now on the broadcast, right here, live, right now. Comment, Jesus, save me. If you will comment that, I believe that's your heart saying, I want him. I'm turning away from my way of doing things. I want to trade my life for Jesus. Jesus, save me. He's the only hope that there is in the future. And if you give him your life, I want you to email us, info at Z Ministries, and tell us, I gave my life to Jesus on the broadcast, and we will send you our partners will. We're going to send you hours of free teaching called Saved, Rescued for a Purpose. We're going to send it right to you because we want you to know what you got when you cried out, Jesus, save me. There's a lot more to Jesus saving you than just fire insurance from hell. Man, I hope you do that right now. But uh, I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray because, you know, you give this kind of information and some people will be like, man, that's a lot of wild stuff. Yeah, it's wild, but there's a lot of people talking about it. And there's a lot of people wholeheartedly believing it and bought into it. And whether they're right or they're wrong, here's the point. We've got to begin to preach the gospel like never before to come against not only this nefarious activity, but what's going on in the hearts and minds of a generation. They don't know up from down. They don't know the right hand from the left hand. And that's why we're here, the Red Church to win them by any means necessary, to win the lost, it's only forever. I'm going to pray for you. I need to pray for you. You know, and just before I pray for you, let me say this. If you're encouraged by this or you're strengthened by this or you say, my goodness, this is wild, or you want to empower us to go get more people and help people uh, navigate this kind of wild information, I encourage you to partner today or give your very best. Go to josephz.com and do that. I'm going to pray for you, but I encourage you to do that. If you're a partner here, can I just simply say, on behalf of my wife, Heather, and I, on behalf of our team and ministry, we are so grateful to you as a partner. We pray for you every day, every day. And if you become a partner, we are going to call you once a month. Our team will call you. We don't hire some call center. Our team calls you. And of course, I tell you how to do it every time because I want you to avoid the scams because the bigger that these platforms get, the more scammers try to pretend they're me and try to tell you uh, to give to them. And you guys have been so good about it, really smart avoiding it. But just to be sure, the way you avoid it is you go to josephz.com or you text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. And uh, I encourage you to partner. If you're partnering and you want to partner, please comment right now. Partnering today. 
partnering today. And I'm going to pray for you because I, I believe it'll help you very much today. But if you come at partnering today, we want to welcome you to our partner family and we'll be in touch with you. I'm telling you, you'll get a call from us every month and it's going to be awesome. And we get great testimonies from that. One more thing I want to say to you also is um, please join our text to join list. 719-719-3637. We are approaching 30,000 people that are on this. In other words, we sent out a text and 30, like 27,000 people get a message that says, hey, we're live. Hey, we're here. Uh, join us right now. And this is a way to avoid some of the suppression that's out there. Uh, we avoid it by simply sending a text right to your phone. If you'll text this number, text the keyword join from your text messages to this number, you'll get a prompt, follow that, and then join this community. So, And we don't hit you up a lot with this. We try to only do it once or twice a week if we really have a now word to give you because then you can engage with us and you're not getting your phone uh, blown up all the time. Nobody wants that. So we're just trying to be... Uh, courteous to you. But if we have a word we need to get to you, we send it. I'll tell you, it's powerful. A lot of people have thanked us and it's been very effective with what we're doing. And so uh, also download that Joseph Z app, especially if you're outside the US, because then you can join us and you'll get notifications that way. And uh, you can get it at your favorite app store, whatever uh, device you use. You can go to your app store and the Joseph Z app is there. And uh, man, we got a lot to get into. We got conferences coming up February 8th, or excuse me, February 9th and 10th in Mesa, Arizona. Rick Renner and myself and our teams and families will be there and so many friends will be ministering. You don't want to miss that. Uh, there's information on josephz.com. Register for that. I ask you to register so we can serve you better. And uh, that's what we're doing. That's going to be a great one. A lot of people are signing up for it. I encourage you to come. It's free, free, free. Everything we do here is free. Praise God. Now, let me say this to you. I'm going to pray for you. This is important. Please, if you would, give me your faith. Come on, line up with the Holy Spirit. Line up with Jesus. I just bless you right now in the name of the Lord. I begin to speak peace and life over you. Any of this nefarious activity that's trying to manifest in this nation, the wickedness that's trying to manifest in this nation and your precious nation, wherever you are, I speak peace over you and that salt and light would outgrow the yoke. Isaiah 10, 27, we'd begin to see the light shine in darkness, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, and the power of God overcoming in your life. I release strength to you. I speak healing over your body right now. Right now, wherever you are, that healing would begin to manifest in your body right now. Some of you are going to start, man, the, the presence of God is on some of you right now. Right now. Right now. The presence of God is healing you. Healing you. Pain, I command it to go from your body. I command pain to leave you. I command peace in your household. No arguments. Strife, leave right now. Somebody's been crying. You've been crying, crying. You were just crying. And the Lord is saying, I'm bringing wholeness to you. And it's like the tenderness of the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. It is well in Jesus' name. It is well. All is well. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to be here for you every single day day this week. I hope you'll join me tomorrow morning too, and I'm going to keep praying for people and ministering to you. Jesus is Lord. Man, I got a lot to get into. Check this out. Please, if you would, watch this. I want to thank our partners and those of you who are watching right now who have been joining us. And maybe there are some of you who might even have been on the fence about becoming a partner. I just want to encourage you, if that's something that you might be praying about or inquiring the Lord about, to maybe just go ahead and take a step. And uh, we would love to invite you as one of the, our partners and as a partner family. You'll get a call every month from us. You'll receive a phone call. We pray for you. And uh, there's we have many other resources that we have where you can come together and receive prayer as well. And so if you're looking to potentially partner somewhere, please send us. We're looking to go everywhere we can reach all around the world to get the gospel of Jesus, the good news to any and all who will hear and see and trust and know that he is Lord. So if you're looking to partner, you can go ahead and go to josephz.com. All the information is there for you to join and to sign up with us and partner up really coming together as a joint partnership to really getting the gospel around the world. 
visit us at josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. We sure do love you all so much and we are so grateful for your support and your help so we can see this world one for Jesus. Are you prepared for 2024? Well, we wanna do our part to ignite the roar in 2024. That's why we're hosting the Power to Stand Conference in Mesa, Arizona, February 9th and the 10th. My dear friend Rick Renner will be joining me along with Pastor Jason Anderson for two powerful days that are saturated in the presence of God. I'm telling you this world is getting wild. This year is going to be filled with unparalleled challenges, but you're gonna be filled with the faith of God to stand against what comes next. I encourage you, join us for this conference February the 9th and 10th at The Power to Stand. I promise you, your life is gonna be impacted. I hope to see you there.